Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> it's a real joy to be with you all here tonight. On this uh, Christmas Eve, we are keeping vigil. We are waiting the dawn. Uh, we are waiting for Christmas Day, which will be coming, oh, so soon and very soon. Uh, we want to welcome you, whether you are here today in our beautiful sanctuary on South Elm Street, or whether you're joining us live um, through our live stream online, um, whether you are watching this at this exact moment, 11 p.m. Eastern, or whether you are joining us later watching the recording, we know that the Spirit of God is mighty and powerful, and it is drawing all of our hearts together in the same place this day. We are meeting here in this place. I want to let you know that we will have communion in this worship service, and we will be doing it we're so excited to be doing it a little differently than we have been able to do in, in a while. Um, we will be inviting you, if you feel comfortable, to come forward, and you will receive uh, a small uh, cube of bread um, dropped into your hand using a serving um, utensil, and then you can pick up, you'll be picking up a pre-served foil juice cup. Um, on your way out. If you would prefer not to receive in that way and would pr prefer what I call astronaut communion, uh, which is the uh, prepackaged wafer already with the juice, um, we can certainly provide you with one of those as well. Um, and finally, if you are joining us online, again, now is a great time to go get those elements for yourself, a cup of juice or wine, bread. Um, if you don't have juice or wine, water is always appropriate. Um, but you can join us wherever you are in that moment. Um, the other important thing to note about communion is your little plastic cup serves a dual purpose. So once you pick it up from communion, uh, keep, a hold, keep, keep a hold of that because after we sing Silent Night, we will have all these lovely lit candles and a great way, a uh, COVID safe way, if you will, to put out a candle that doesn't involve blowing it out is to take that little juice cup and shh, turn it over and dump it. Right. And you don't dump the juice, you will have already drunk the juice. So it'll be an empty cup. Um, but it works as a great little snuffer. So that's just a little tip for you there. If you, are, um, if you gave a poinsettia in honor of someone, we'd love for you to pick that up on your way out. Um, we are so grateful, again, that you are here this coming Sunday on the 26th. We will have one service at 10 a.m. Again, it's in person. It's online, one service at 10 a.m. Um, we do, our session does strongly recommend mask wearing here in worship. Um, and we know that we have our new highly contagious Omicron variant. So just as a, as a word for you all. Um, but we would like to note that there is something else contagious here tonight. Hope. Peace. Joy. And love. Impossible. Incredible. World-changing love. May it be born in us today. Amen. So now, let us speak the words that call us to worship. Please join me in the call to worship. An unmarried teenage girl was invited to carry, carry Christ, Christ into, into this world. world. An ordinary carpenter was invited to be, to be a, a father, father to, to a, a child, child unlike, unlike any other. other. The shepherds were invited, outcast, outcast and, and isolated, isolated included, included at, at the manger. manger. The magi were invited, foreigners, foreigners and, and seekers, seekers included, included at, at the, the manger. manger. And if she was invited, and he was invited, and they were invited, then we, we can, can trust, trust that, that we too are invited. invited. This story is for us. This, this love, love is, is for us. us. Family of faith, this is our invitation. Welcome well, home. Amen. Amen.
hope. For God loves us too much to leave us just as we are. In God's house there is peace. For all that separates us from God falls away. In God's house there is joy. Because God created music and coffee and dance floors and laughter that is contagious and endless rounds of peekaboos with babies. And if those things have God's fingerprints, then God's house surely exudes joy. In God's house, there is love, because God is love from start to finish, and that love exists for us all. And in the center of our hope, in the center of our peace, in the center of our joy, in the center of our love is God, who came to this earth to dwell among us. So tonight we light the Christ candle, for God's love just could not stay away. Welcome home. Amen. Please be seated. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, 
the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was rescinded from the house and was he went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn.
In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a God from the heavenly host, praising God and saving. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let Let's go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them.
Once upon a time, David danced around the Ark of the Covenant, and tonight Cameron has danced before the manger, and we give thanks. Let us pray. Holy God, we ask that on this Christmas Eve, your word would be present with us. We remember that your word has been with us since the beginning. It was by the power of your word that the world was created. It was with a word that you brought humanity into existence. And it was with a word from the prophets pointing to you that they reminded us how to love you, how to walk justly and with mercy. And Lord, it is your word incarnate whom we come to adore tonight. So we ask that as we worship, that we would feel your presence, that in this place, your spirit would surround us, that it would truly be a holy moment for us all, because it is you, it is your work, It is how you have come to us. And we are so thankful for your son, Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you. In Christ's name we pray, amen. When I was a kid, or actually not just a kid, all the way up until I went to college, I went to a little small uh, church in northwest Georgia called Somerville Presbyterian Church, and they didn't have an 11 o'clock service. Uh, they, they did one service at 7 and went home, and, and that was it. But it was a little church, and I've really come to appreciate this 11 o'clock service uh, that, that's here and a couple other places where I've been. Uh, but... I have to tell you, before I was a pastor, I never really went to anything that was called a vigil very often. When I heard of vigils, uh, sometimes it was on a TV show, you know, uh, people, something bad would have happened. Everybody would get around and have candles and they would have a vigil. Or if, um, sometimes if you're really hoping for something that uh, maybe uh, somebody's sick, and you pray, hold a, a vigil. And then the first vigil I went to was actually uh, the night uh, that someone I knew was shot. And we had a peace vigil. And we walked the streets with candlelights and prayed for peace. But then... I went to something called an Easter vigil, and that was very different because in an Easter vigil, you go Saturday night, a little bit like Easter Eve, and you hold a service and you're waiting for news of the resurrection. So it's so much more hopeful than what I heard. A vigil is about what you're waiting for. So tonight we're holding a Christmas Eve vigil, but really it's a Christmas vigil, because Christmas Eve's already come. We're waiting for Christmas. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure Christmas is going to happen tomorrow. Is anybody in doubt that Christmas is going to happen tomorrow? It's on the calendars, right? All our calendars tell us it's, it's, so why bother having a vigil? Why are we praying for something we already know is going to happen? Well, It's because what happened was so special. I was uh, thinking about when different people start getting in the Christmas spirit. I know some people just this week got into the Christmas spirit, maybe even tonight. (laughs) And I know some people say, well, you know, I'll wait till December or maybe after Thanksgiving. I know some folks who start decorating as soon as Halloween is over. Y'all know any of those folks? You've seen them? And in the gas station in August, I saw Reese's Christmas trees in August. And you can't find them now. You can probably find the Easter ones, though. 
Um, we've no, no matter when you get in the mood for Christmas, you know it's coming. It's December 25th. It's been, in fact, you already know when Christmas is next year, right? It's December 25th. Doesn't even move on the calendar like Easter does. You always know when it's coming. And so it's a little easy to let Christmas get routine. And by that, I don't mean like less crazy because it's always kind of crazy. But it's easy to say this is the Christmas script. I go to these places to look for gifts I, uh, these, this is the list of people I shop for, this is the time I need to get the cards out by, uh, we need to make sure that we make it to Christmas Eve service, and on Christmas morning, we have our tradition, and this is how we start it. We're going to block off the living room so the kids don't come in and see their Christmas presents before we wake up, and we're going to have... Uh, these cinnamon rolls. We haven't talked about it, but uh, yeah, we're having the cinnamon rolls, all right? So we already know, and then there'll be gifts, right? We also know what happens after Christmas, and approximately how long I will procrastinate before taking the tree apart and putting it back outside. We already know these things. You know when Christmas break comes and when it'll be over. But here's the thing. I want you to think about the very first Christmas. There was nothing expected happening. Think about Mary. How her life was taken over by this thing that they couldn't even explain. I mean, she got pregnant and not by like the regular ways. And she had to wing it. You know, an angel came to her. We just read about this in the Annunciation. An angel came to her. And the first thing the angel says, and by the way, the same same thing, angel says the same thing to to the shepherds later on. First thing the angel does is pop out and say, do not be afraid. What's the first thing you'd do if, like, an angel came? I'd freak out, right? Well, think about the shepherds. Like, the sky rips open. I mean, think about that. They're hanging out outside. The sheep are probably out for the count. They're outside, and the sky rips open. An angel comes out and says, don't be afraid. Well, what's the first thing you do? You be afraid, right? Then, not only does one angel come out, a host, a heavenly host. That's like, that's army language. A host comes out. The armies of angels of heaven come out. Didn't expect that. They said, go check out this child. Now, uh, if I was at Shepherd, I'm not entirely sure I would have gone and checked out the child. I might have gone and hidden. That's kind of the uh, Jonah response, right? But that's not what Mary did. Mary embraced the challenge. And you know, it could have happened. She was on a camel. She could have gone into labor at any point on that trip to Bethlehem. Because you know, they weren't from there. I mean, they were from there, but way back. That's not where they lived. And on a camel ride, she could have given birth anywhere on that trip. But she was brave and she hung on. She had faith. The Christmas story is harrowing. The Christmas story is a story about a child born in a place that is utterly unsanitary. Unsanitary. It's where the animals were. Now, when my kids were born, Grace and Jake, we, were, we lived in Ohio at the time. There were a lot of farms up there. And if instead of going to Dublin Methodist Hospital, I'd pulled up to any one of the farms and put Karen in one of those rooms, well, she wouldn't be my wife anymore. Yep. She'd have had none of that. Who would have a baby in those circumstances? But she didn't have a choice. It was a harrowing tale. It was a tale of how in the midst of crisis, God literally showed up. And here's my promise for you. Christ will show up for you too.
I think each of us has that moment when Christmas gets real each year. When we feel it right in the heart. When we feel that time when it goes from like all the stuff you do in the season to, oh my goodness, God came and moved into the neighborhood. Like That's so amazing. And you know, God, think about what God had to give up to do that. Imagine being so powerful that nothing could ever harm you. And in order to be with the people that God loves so much, God said, okay, I'll become mortal. Incarnation means to, literally to put on flesh. God puts on flesh and joins us. And in joining us from the, whether he was crucified or not, the moment he was born, he was destined to die. Because from birth, we all age every single day. That the saving act of Jesus Christ didn't start at Calvary. It started in Bethlehem. And in this, we hear the name Jesus means he saves. There's some language out there where people say, like, when were you saved? And there's a lot of different answers to that. But I'll tell you from the Presbyterian heritage, you don't know what our answer is? Our answer is we were saved 2,000 years ago. Because as soon as Christ came, and Christ's love and Christ's grace is absolutely irresistible and as soon as we open our hearts to it it fills us so on this night we are challenged when we hold vigil to know that in the at the first christmas it was a harrowing tale and where would christ be born the most unlikely of places and now today as we celebrate the incarnation again, where will Christ be born again? Tonight. Is there room in your inn? Is there room for him here? Can you push out all the other thoughts about the season? Be in this moment and feel Christ. Can you hear the baby cry? Can you see the way that Mary and Joseph would look at it? Or the faces of the shepherds as they arrived and the story was true. Can you see this harrowing moment come to a peaceful end? It's easy for us to have hope in Christmas now because we know how it turned out. But I want you to think about how dangerous it was and how hard it would have been to hope. Because right now we have things that are hard to hope for. It is hard to hope for peace right now. Whether it's in the world or in our nation or even in our communities, peace is hard to come by. But there is hope. Can you hear the baby cry? What is more hopeful than looking at a baby? Because a baby is looking at a baby is like looking at the future because you know it will grow and become something. And this baby grew to become the one who taught us to love our neighbor, to love God. And that the last will be first. That we should care about people who don't have as much as us. The one who would dare us to turn the other cheek. The one who would tell us that he himself came to serve, not to be served. And that we should do the same. That is a baby. That is a man. That is a God. Who has a hopeful future all figured out. So let's hold vigil for that. Amen.
I want to talk about, actually, let me come out. I want to talk about the offering tonight. We have a really great offering. And you know what's great? We're not going to keep a single penny of it. We're going to give it all away. So not, if, if you're not used to coming here, if you don't know the drill with our uh, Christmas Eve offering, we're not going to keep a single penny of this. You know what we're going to do? We are going to pay a month's mortgage for every Habitat for Humanity homeowner in Pitt County. You believe that? Do you want to be a part of that? I want to be a part of that. I've already written my check. I hope you're as excited about this as I am. This is the second year in a row we've done this. Because think about this. People who have received Habitat for Humanity homes are people who were on the very margins who needed help the most and got a home and then in the middle of this crisis they were the most vulnerable again and so we don't want them to slide backwards and say well you got your shot that's it we want to say no we want you to be able to afford your medicine and your food and all those good things so we're going to pay and I bet you that our generosity will even go beyond a month but we're going to pay for a whole month for every single Habitat homeowner in all of Pitt County. I think you want to be a part of that. So while the music plays, maybe consider uh, how you'll participate in that. The offering boxes are outside. There's a few ways that you can do that. You can uh, put the check there. If you're online, you can uh, mail it here to the church. Or you can, uh, you can give online uh, through the website but the checks here in person are preferable for this particular offering. So um, I would invite you to consider how you will be praying for um, uh, these folks and how you might participate. The other thing I'll tell you uh, during this time of offering is there's a card in the pews. Uh, it's, called, it's our new Connect card, and you can either use your phone to scan it and connect with us, or you can fill it out if you want uh, the newsletter or if you want the weekly uh, phone call with updates, or if you want to meet with a pastor, there's opportunities to let us know all that, and you can put those in the offering boxes too. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to give an offering to God to serve our community.
Please bow your heads. Loving God, you have given us so much in the gift of this baby Jesus, who comes to bring hope and light to all the world. Bless these gifts that in sharing them, we might share a bit of our joy this Christmas. Bless those who received them, that they may feel the love of God in this gift from strangers. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated. Friends, as we come to our time of communion, I, I, I always like to be very clear that in our tradition we practice what's called an open table. What that means is there is a seat at this table, there is a place here for you. If you come seeking Christ, we want you to receive the bread and cup with us. Because God has always been in the habit of taking ordinary things and turning them into extraordinary testaments of God's love. First it was a teenage girl who became God's mother, and then a manger that became God's bed. Then there were the shepherds in the fields who became the first believers, and stars in the sky that became the very first steeples. Now tonight, it's all of us, ordinary people who come to this table to meet an extraordinary God, to be transformed into a extraordinary testaments of God's love. Let us pray. God of starry nights, you sent your Son into this world to teach us what impossible love looks like. Love without limits, love without hesitation, love without holding back, and the whole world is better for it. Tonight we come to this table craving a reminder of that love. As we break this bread and we drink of this cup, remind us of Mary who treasured those ordinary moments. The smell of hay and the look of a sleeping baby. Help us to do the same. For your beauty and fingerprints are everywhere. As we gather around this table as a community, remind us of the people who showed up at the manger scene. The magi and the shepherds. And may we remember that all are welcome here, regardless of class, age, race, gender, orientation, size, or status. As we lift our voices together in prayer and in song, remind us of the many people who said no to Mary and Joseph that night, as well as the people who finally said, yes, there is room here. May we be the people who are always in the habit of saying, yes, there is room here. There is room for you and your dreams and your hopes and your fears and your love. You are welcome at the table of God. Holy God of alleluias and angel choruses, surround us with your light this night and send your spirit to settle upon this bread and this cup and fill them with the fullness of Jesus. And let that same spirit rest upon us, converting us from the patterns of this passing world until we conform to the shape of him whose food we now share. Amen. We remember that on the night that he was arrested, which was not so long after that first silent night, our Lord took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them. And he said, take and eat for this is my body and it's broken for you. He said, do this remembering me. And then after they had eaten, he took the cup and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant, which is poured out for you in my blood. It is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. He said, do this remembering me. And so we do. We join in that long line of believers who meet at this table, who meet in this moment and say yes to God 
and say yes. We are here and we wish to receive the body and the blood of the one who saves us. My friends, come, for all is ready for you. You will be coming up the center aisle, and you will be receiving bread. In, you've probably put your hands maybe forward like this. That way you'll get a bread dropped in your hands. If you are gluten-free, we do have gluten-free wafers that are in their own single-serve cups, which you can pick up, and you will receive the body and the blood and return to your seats.
let us pray. Emmanuel, God with us, you have put your life into our hands. Now we put our lives into yours. Take us, renew us, and remake us. What we have been is past, what we will be through you still awaits us. Lead us, take us with you. Amen. Friends, we come now to the time of lighting candles. And I want to remind you of that very sage advice, which is that when you are passing the light of Christ, you keep the lit candle upright, and then you take the unlit candle and you tilt it to receive the light. So you can think of it this way. Once your candle is lit, keep that light pointed straight up to the heavens and allow the others to, to receive the light from you. In the beginning. In the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All was, form all was formlessness and void. A darkness covered the face of the deep, and the breath of God hovered over the face of the waters. And then the angel said, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be all, to all people. Then God spoke, let there be light, and there was light. Everything was created through him. Nothing, not one thing, came into being without him. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. What came into existence was life, and the life was light to live by. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. The life light blazed out of the darkness. The darkness couldn't put it out. The life light was the real thing. Every person entering life, he brings into light. And this shall be a sign unto you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. He was in the world. The world was there through him, and yet the world didn't even notice. He came to his own people, but they didn't want him. But whoever did want him, who believed he was who he claimed and would do what he said, he made to be their true selves, their child of God's selves. These are the God begotten, not blood begotten, not flesh begotten. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory, like father, like son, Generous inside and out, true, from start to finish. Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth. Goodwill to all.
I'm going to give you your charge first. When we end this service, you'll extinguish your light. If you've got the little uh, thing, you can do that. Or if you need to blow, make sure that it's close and tight. But when you do that, see, the thing is, that means this Christ candle, the light that we have, it becomes you. So when your light goes out, you have to be the candle. And you have to bear the light out into the world. And you have to be the manger to hold the Christ child in your heart as you go out. So that's my charge to you. My blessing is this. May your Christmas season be filled with hope, with peace, with joy, and with love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.